Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the M1 MacBook Air. It came out late 2020, so this is four years old, and it's been Apple's cheapest laptop, and also good enough for pretty much everyone. But then last year, they introduced the M2 in the 13-inch and a new bigger 15-inch flavor, along with a big design refresh, the new M2 chip, better webcam, thinner bezels, and the M2 was better in pretty much every way. The main downside was it's more expensive. And with the M1, which is still very capable, a couple hundred quid cheaper, and then you've got the new MacBook Pro 14s, a few hundred more, it was a tougher sell. Until now, perhaps, because if I pop these over here and start my stack of MacBooks, as Apple have just launched the new M3 MacBook Airs, which are more powerful, we get better connectivity, also in 13 and 15 inch flavors, but this is more of a spec bump, because what this launch also does is finally push out the M1 Air. This has been discontinued. You can't officially buy it new from Apple. Uh, you can still buy it refurbished and also uh, obviously lots of retailers still have stock of it. But this, which started at 999, has now been replaced with this, the M2 Air now starting at 999. So this has had a bit of a price cut making the M2 Air the new entry level MacBook. So is now a good time to upgrade? What's new with these M3s? Is it worth paying an extra 100 over the M2 to get these fancy new ones? And which spec should you actually go for? Well, I'm glad you asked. And by the way, I'll have a full MacBook buying guide coming in the next few days. So make sure you have hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. So in the box with the new MacBook Air M3, you have, well, the laptop, obviously, uh, and also the MagSafe charger. Now, by default, this is a 30 watt charger, but if you go for the higher storage option or pay a little bit extra, you can get either a dual port 35 watt charger, so you can plug in your phone as well as your laptop, or a much faster 70 watt fast charger for your MacBook. And I would probably get that one. And because we have this MagSafe port, which we didn't on the M1 Air, we still have the two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports free for plugging in your monitors, adapters, and external storage drives. So I have the 13 inch in Starlight and the 15 in Midnight, but you've also got silver and space gray options. And actually this Midnight color is the only one that benefits from the anti fingerprinty finish uh, that we also get on the Space Black MacBook Pro. Although bear in mind that does only apply to the lid and the base, the exterior of the chassis, not on the inside. And if it's anything like my 16 inch Space Black MacBook Pro, which I'm currently using uh, for some notes on my script, it's still a bit of a greasy mess on the inside. This is the M2 Midnight, and this is the M3 Midnight. Maybe a couple of less smudges, but it's not that big of a deal. But still, the MacBook Air is a lovely looking laptop. It might not be as futuristic looking as a Dell XPS, although I don't love the keyboard on that thing, or as productivity focused perhaps as the dual screen ASUS ZenBook Duo. It's a standard clamshell laptop. It's a MacBook, you know what you're getting, and I still think it looks good. It's thin, it's light, we get a great keyboard and touchpad, top-notch performance, and it's completely fanless, so unlike the pros, it doesn't make any sound, and even under pressure, it never got more than a bit warm. It will easily last you a full day on battery, and Apple say up to 18 hours of local video playback, the same as the M2, although over the past couple of days, I've been averaging about 12 hours of general use, which is still very good. Now, right off the bat, if you already own a MacBook Air with the M2, then this is not worth the upgrade. There's three main differences. You get the M3 chip, which is a little bit faster, particularly for graphics and AI, and we'll come to some performance benchmarks in a second. Uh, we also get Wi-Fi 6E rather than Wi-Fi 6, but of course you will need a 6E router to take advantage of that, and almost no one does. Uh, plus we have Wi-Fi 7 now, so it would have been good to see that. But anyway, Wi-Fi 6E, and also you can now output to two external monitors with the M3 chip, whereas this is limited to one. Although the caveat is you are still only limited to two screens. So in order to have two monitors, and you can see here the M3 Air is hooked up to two 5K studio displays, the laptop needs to be in clamshell mode, closed essentially. Open the lid and it'll turn one of these screens off. Quick side note actually, because right now the base MacBook Pro, the 14 inch with the M3 chip, actually is limited to just one external screen like the M2 Air. But Apple say there will be a software update to bring parity with these new M3 Airs. Which means that functionality was there all along and Apple simply turned it off on the base model Pros to convince you to pay extra to get the M3 Pro chip in the Pro laptops. <sighs> In terms of the screen, again, identical to last year's M2 Air, but if you are coming from the M1, then you will benefit from the 20% brighter brightness, 500 nits up from 400 nits, and this brightness does match what you get on the Apple Studio display. Uh, and also it's a little bit bigger screen because they've shrunk the bezels. And of course we get that notch at the top there, which houses the much improved 1080p webcam. Here's a test for the webcam. 
Paddington Station. Um, pretty loud. Now what I can do is switch on voice isolation with the microphone. Hopefully that's cut out some of that background sound. Other options I have with the FaceTime TTP camera, I can go to portrait mode. I can also adjust the strength of that. Now this isn't new for the M3, uh, but it basically shares the same camera as the M2. Although we do have improved microphones. The voice clarity has improved, apparently. Um, although also the speakers, one change with the speakers, one downgrade arguably is we've lost the wide sound, according to Apple specs at least. I couldn't hear that much difference between the M2 and the M3. I still think the M1 sounds a little bit better because you've got the actual speaker grills flanking the keyboard, although MacBook Pros definitely still win. I could also put on studio light. And yeah, everyone's probably looking at me like, why is he talking to a laptop in a train station? Uh, one last thing to mention while I've got you, in terms of the difference between the 13 and the 15 MacBook Airs, they are identical, except for three things. Bigger screen, obviously, about 200 pounds more expensive, and the 15 inch has six speakers versus four speakers on the 13 inch. So for a slightly better sound, and you, it is noticeably better, you might want the 15 inch. Don't get me wrong, these are very nice screens. Good color accuracy, wide viewing angles, the 500 nit brightness is pretty good, and I think the Quad HD resolution thereabouts is a good fit for the size. However, compared to some of the Windows rivals, the screen, I think, is falling behind a little bit. There's no 120 hertz high refresh, there's no OLED or mini LED option, no touchscreen. So versus the M2, not worth the upgrade. And even Apple quote the performance increases from the M1. They're not really suggesting that you should upgrade from last year's M2. However, versus the M1, which came out in 2020, or God forbid you're running an older Intel-powered MacBook, then there may be finally enough reasons to actually upgrade. So let's talk about the M3, this new processor, which is really the headline upgrade of these new MacBooks. How much faster is it than the M1 and the M2? Well, let me throw a whole bunch of numbers at you. And you can see the jump on the M1 is a lot more significant than the M2. Apple said it was up to 60% faster, and in that OpenCL graphics test, 61%. And in Cinebench, we're looking at a nearly 50% jump from the M1 to the M3 in multi-core performance. And then finally, we have Blender, Premiere Pro, and of course, Old Faithful, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And so broadly, we're looking at about a 55% uptick from the M1 and around 15% from the M2, thereabouts. And this translates to games as well, because the M3 supports dynamic caching, mesh shaders, and hardware ray tracing. Although ray tracing isn't really that widely used right now, basically it all adds up to mean it's much faster in games. And considering we're getting roughly the same battery in the same form factor and still with a fanless design, in terms of efficiency and performance, you've got to take your hat off to those Apple engineers. Now we just need more games on Mac. Obviously we've got a decent sized Steam library, but nothing compared to what you get on Windows. You've got Apple Arcade, you can stream games from Xbox Cloud or GeForce Now, so you do have options, but hopefully with this new more powerful processor in both the Airs and the Pros, we will see more devs port their games to run natively on Mac OS. What is also interesting though, is that the M3 in the MacBook Air gives us broadly the same performance as the M3 in the MacBook Pro. In a couple of tests it falls behind, particularly when we're dealing with sustained performance, because of course the Pro laptop has fans, so the M3 chip doesn't have to throttle as quickly. But it does raise the question, is the MacBook Pro actually worth buying now with this M3 Air? Well I'm going to make a whole video just about that, so make sure you have subscribed. Apple's also very keen to push the AI performance of these guys. The M3 has a 16-core neural engine, and while there are a handful of AI-accelerated applications out there, Apple showed me FreeChat and Luminar Neo, right now it's a bit more about future-proofing. And also, as Apple are expected to completely revolutionize their AI capabilities with Gen AI and Siri, uh, probably announced at this year's uh, WWDC in June, coming with new software updates later in the year. But for now, the vast majority of your AI-ing will be in the cloud. Your Photoshop Gen Phil, your ChatGPT, and Copilot in Microsoft Office. Oh, and also don't forget, the M3 gives us an AV1 decode engine, which, without boring you all to death, is kind of a big deal for being able to play back videos that use the AV1 codec, which more and more will, much more efficiently. But numbers aside, it is incredibly impressive how capable this M3 chip is. And to a larger extent, the M2 and still the M1 as well, to be fair. Especially as these MacBook Airs are a fanless design. 
Being able to edit 4K videos and use 3D apps like Blender, even some proper gaming at full HD with mid to high settings. For almost everyone, this is more power than you'll ever need. As my mum would say, it'll see her out. Although if you do need something with a bit more oomph, uh, particularly sustained oomph because it has a fan, then you do, of course, have the MacBook Pro options as well. This is a maxed out 16 inch MacBook Pro, which costs like seven and a half grand. That's the top spec one. You don't need to spend that kind of money, but certainly if you've got an extra 400 or so in your budget and want a brighter, higher refresh screen, more ports, uh, and just a more powerful M3 Pro or Max processor, then you do have that option. So all that for £1,099. What's not to love? Well, a couple of things. Firstly, we have to talk about the specs because the base M3 Air still only comes with eight gigs of RAM and 256 storage. That's the same configuration that we got on the M1 Air four years ago. Obviously it's faster RAM and storage, but I don't think it's enough. So I would 100% pay the extra 200 pounds to double it to 16 gigs. And also by doing that, or if you opt for more storage, you also get the M3 with a 10 core GPU, an extra two cores over the base spec. But then I'd probably also recommend doubling the storage for another 200 pounds to 512 gigs, partly because it's a faster SSD drive, although it's not that significant of a difference that you'd really notice it everyday life, but it's, you know, a faster drive, but also more importantly for the increased storage space. You're gonna fill up 256 gigs pretty quickly. But then an M3 Air with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 storage, probably the spec you would want, you're looking at 1500 pounds or 1700 if you want the 15 inch. Realistically though, I would probably just go with a 16 gigs of RAM because you can't upgrade it. And if you're gonna use this for the next five or six years or so, then you don't wanna be running out of RAM, especially as apps and games become even more demanding. And while 256 gigs of storage isn't that much, you can always just plug in an external SSD or back up to iCloud. You have options that you don't have with the RAM. I am pleased to see though that for the first time there is an off the shelf SKU with 16 gigs of RAM so you should just be able to walk into a store and pick one up and not have to customize it and wait for it to ship. Also don't forget you can trade in your laptop. This is the base spec M1 Air from four years ago and Apple will give me 385 pounds with a trade in towards one of these guys, which is a pretty good deal. It's over a third of the original price, although I would probably just give this to someone because it's still a very capable laptop. And speaking of which, if you can get the M1 Air on a good deal, and right now on Amazon UK, it's like 770 pounds for a new M1 Air, that's not a bad price for this. So to wrap up, the MacBook Air M3 is by no means a perfect laptop, and Apple's stinginess with the RAM and storage continues to be a frustration. But still, these really are excellent all-rounder laptops. They'll last you a long time, as we've seen from the still very capable M1 Air. I mean, there aren't many four-year-old Windows laptops that still hold up this well. So I reckon for most of us, if you need a new MacBook, I would just get the M2 for 999. However, while the £100 or dollar premium for the M3 isn't that much, if you are considering it for the better performance, then you will also definitely want to upgrade the RAM to 16 gigs, which does make it then significantly more expensive. To put it another way, I would take a 16 gig M2 versus an 8 gig M3 laptop. But what about you? What laptop are you using right now and are you tempted to upgrade? And if you have any questions or anything you'd like me to test, then drop a comment below. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time right here on the tech chap as I just assemble my stack of MacBook Airs.